All right, let's dive in so we have time for everything. And I'm going to keep an eye on the chat. And even if you are in the upper grades, a lot of what I'm going to say will be helpful for you. Primaria highlights. What do we have in Primaria that is geared just for the littles? We have TPR or total physical response gestures. These are gestures that help kids understand the meaning of the words. They actually tie them to the right place in your brain so that you can um, tie the movement to the meaning and it helps your brain recall it more easily. These are especially amazing for our pre-literate students. They really help them jump on the, the language learning um, bandwagon much more quickly. We have activities called empezamos activities that are mostly activities that get the kids off the screens. If you are teaching an upper level um, class, I recommend grabbing some of these empezamos activities and using them with your units with the older kids. The older kids, all human beings like to play. I put in games that I like to play, even with my students. And these get students moving and just because there's an empezamos activity that's only listed with one story, it doesn't mean you have to leave that game there and not do it the rest of the year. These games are mostly games that can come into play at any point in your school year. We have beautiful stories. In Primaria Una, they mostly follow animals because the younger kids really like animals. But in Primar And the animals are from the countries, and we get to look at countries a little bit too. In Primaria Dos, we actually follow the same cast of students that live all over the world um, throughout all of the stories. So your students can kind of get to know the individual characters. We have um, multiple choice activities for students. We have beautiful pictures with articles that explain and inspire and intrigue the students about the world. That's one of my favorites, that's Bolivian Salt Flats. We have interviews with students where students can get to know how what students around the world are thinking about topics of interest to them. They are already up in Primaria Una and we're almost ready to release the interviews for Primaria Dos. We're just waiting for some of the activities to finish up, but those are very close to being ready. We have a novel already in Primaria Una and we are working on one for Primaria Dos. There's even a book you can do with your students with beautiful illustrations that teach them about the world and much more. We also, as you probably have seen, have a pacing guide that's going to give you an idea of about how long everything will take. If you see your students 20 minutes, 30, 45, 45 minutes, or for multiple times a week, it tells you about how long a unit. Um, where do the Primarias live? They're in the are, they're in the Nuestra Historia series. Is that what you're asking? Sorry, Lawrence asked, where do the Primarias live? And there are no dumb questions. If you don't know the answer, it's probably because I didn't explain it well enough. Lawrence, are you just talking about what series they're in? I can show you within my title. So if you're switching titles, Primaria Una is right here and Primaria Dos will be right after it. And if you don't have it in your title, you can always add it. We can show you how to do that in a minute. But you definitely, if you have the Our Story series, if you have one of our Spanish titles, you definitely have access. And then right here, we break it down for you, of course, even further with if you are doing this profile, these are what we recommend you do, these are potential extensions, and so on and so forth. Do you have to stick to this? Of course not. You should adapt it to meet your students, but it's there for you so you can kind of plan out your year and have an idea of where you're going and where you might want to arrive at. We break it down even further too with telling you roughly how long you might want to spend on each activity. Of course, you could spend longer and right at the start of the year, you should probably expect to spend a little bit longer as we're getting our students into their routines and getting their Spanish brains awake, but it's all right there for you so you can kind of get an idea of how you want to pace out these units. Now, the actual units are broken down into an introduction and then we have, and there's one for teachers and one for students, we have a, two mini stories. Each mini story has vocabulary pages. Empezamos activities. I wrote all the empezamos activities. I love them. They're all activities that get your students moving or interacting or thinking, higher level thinking things. I'm really excited about most of those. Then we have our stories in Primaria Dos. Like I said, it, it follows the same cast of characters throughout, throughout the whole book and you get to kind of know them and know who they are. We also have Vamos videos, which we'll watch one if we have time. I'm not sure we will. It's a retelling of the story with kind of sound effects and like focusing in on different parts of the stories. If you ever watched like very early like book cartoons from the 80s, it's what I grew up on. Um, it's kind of along those lines. So it's kind of a fun, different way to hear the story. We have activities students can do. 
extra extra which is where you get articles and pictures and videos like the art the interviews and then finally we have the evaluation section which has a longer story with all of these things in it and it also has a vocabulary test and it also has an assessment for the students and you have your total structures where you see the mountains, those are can do um, activities and there is a pre unit can do assessment that you can do with students. And then you can have them do it at the end so you can measure their growth and have those wonderful student growth objectives and prove that your students are measuring their own growth when you are evaluated. Now, we start these out with a total physical response and it could be as simple as going through these and saying, okay, class, we're gonna learn these words. Mascota significa pet, it means pet. Everyone show me mascota. And you could go down the list and have them show you all of those. You could also say, who thinks they can do mascota really well and have them come up and show the class. You could also play charades with this. You could have students come up and act out one of these words and then the rest of the class has to raise their hand and guess which one they're acting out. These are all sorts of different ways you can interact with total physical response. And these, this is a great way to get your students familiar with the words before you even dive into the story. This is one of our Empezamos activities. It's a pretty simple one. These are some of the words the students would have just learned, mostly family words, but you also have pet and chameleon. And there are total physical response gestures for all of these words, which by the way, you can use the ones that we have in the book, but you can also make up your own with the class. There's no reason you have to stick to the ones in the book. And over here, the game is charades, and they're supposed to pick one from each category and act it out at the same time. So they might be showing you like, um, bebe. which one do you think that is? Put it in the chat. Which two numbers do you think I'm acting out? Any guesses? Maybe I'm not doing it well. Yes, one in 18, a mad baby. So if you're the teacher getting up there, kids love doing this. And sometimes they'll try and act out two or three at the same time. And all this is, is lots of extra repetitions. So you just are up there and you're like, oh, un bebe enojado. Or you're just repeating it for them over and over again. They are doing most of the work. Kids will play this game for a long time. You're just sitting there watching them being silly and it breaks down effective filters and it makes it, builds community and all of the great things. This is only in one of the Empezamos activities, but could you use it for almost any of the TPR or vocabulary? Of course, of course, of course you could. This is another really fun one. The second story in Primaria Dos has a student who goes to visit her grandparents and loses her pet chameleon. So we included a little reading that teaches you about chameleons and where they live around the world. Students love maps. And then they get to actually decide which of these they want to be their own pet chameleon. And so they get to fill in the sentence stems that are really important words like I call myself, I am. They get to color one of these. You could have them do all sorts of silly things like give their chameleon clothes or give their chameleon some food. You could then put these around the room just to display them because students like to look at them. You'll get lots of free repetitions of pretty much all of these things because students will want to see, oh, what did my friend name their chameleon? How is their chameleon feeling that day? So you get lots of interesting repetitions without having to rewrite the wheel. These are great for hanging the hall. Students will stop and read them because they find them interesting. They're great for throwing in your free voluntary reading library. If you just stick them in like the sheet covers and put them in a binder, students will look at these during like free voluntary reading time. And they're also good for guessing games. You could show a chameleon, say what its name is, say how it feels, and then ask students to guess whose chameleon is this? And that's like a whole like, so with this one, one piece of paper, you could do quite a bunch of different activities. You could also just let them take it home, take their chameleon pet home. There's no wrong answer. Um, and then we have this that goes with the chameleons. This is also in the Empezamos. It's an, a guess who activity. In class, I would do this in the target language when they have the appropriate amount of vocabulary. And they should by the time you get here there. I would start by saying, um, I'm going to give you a couple of clues. And then you have to guess um, by number which chameleon I am describing. Um, there, and I'll do this in English, just in case we have any people that are not Spanish and you're just here for strategies, but I would do this in Spanish in the classroom. There is a chameleon. The chameleon is small. The chameleon is blue. The chameleon has glasses. Which chameleon is it? Go ahead and put the number of your guests in the chat. 
by the way, numbering things is on purpose. It lowers the effective filter and makes kids feel like they're taking less of a risk if they can just show you on their fingers what the number is. So that allows your students who are able, capable of producing can certainly produce a language and raise their hand and answer out loud. But your student who is only at the step on their language journey where they're comprehending or are a major introvert and they don't really want to risk saying a word in class can also show you in their fingers what they think the answer is. So it makes it really inclusive for everyone. And you all are right. Um, some of you, well, some of you are right. I was looking at Memo right here, but Mepo was also a good guess. And in class, you could say that, oh, Memo is correct. And I would do a high five from far away. But Mepa is also good because Mepa is blue and small with glasses. So that's one game you could do. Whoever guesses yours can go next or have another person go next. And then most of the Empezamos activities have extension ideas. My extension idea on this was 20 questions. So once they have the ability and the language for it, they can say things like, like I would say, okay, I've got a chameleon. And then the class would raise their hand and take turns guessing. And they would say things like, is your chameleon blue? And I've got a different one this time. So I would say, no. Oh, okay. Is your chameleon orange? I would say yes. Does your chameleon have a headband? I would say no. Does your chameleon have a bow? I would say yes. And the students might not know the word for headband or bow, but they could say, do they have? And have is kind of more important word than bow. And then I would just provide them with the words they didn't know. So again, this game could take a long time. The kids love playing either guess who or 20 questions. You could play this a lot. You don't have to just do it with this activity. After you get through your Empezamos activities, and there's two or three for every story um, of the historietas, the mini stories, uh, you get your actual story. And the actual stories have native speaker audio that you can speed up or slow down to match the needs of your students. They have beautiful illustrations. You can always take the time to talk about any of these pictures with any of the strategies we've given you before. I tried to include flags for the countries the person is visiting. And these blue texts are hover overs. So if you hover over them, because it's the word we think your students might not know, you will be given the English for the word. You can also, if you didn't notice right here, print the story. So if you want your students to have their own copy, if you want to make little mini books for your free volunteer library, you can. We try to enable you to do all the things. And this is just proceeding through this story. And in this story, she loses her pet chameleon. And she's very, very scared. And her whole family, she's in Colombia, helps her look for it. And what's so great about this illustration in particular, and I'm going quickly because um, we don't have that long, is look what's hidden all over this picture. Can you see it? tiny little chameleons are hidden all over this picture because they're looking for her pet chameleon. So this could be a really fun game of I spy with your students where you're having them find how many chameleons they think there are. You could have them count them, all sorts of fun activities. We tried to make it the visuals really, really rich and visuals that would help you to tell the story and show students what's going on. Um, and then this is just the end of that story. And again, you can print the stories. And then after that, we have those little videos. And the Vamos videos are, I kind of told you about them already, but I'm going to show you really quickly because they are a lot of fun. This is Historieta Dos Vamos. And we have about half of them done. We will have the rest done soon, though. Ooh, can you hear the sound? Give me one second. I just realized I shared in the wrong way. I did not share my audio. You'll be able to hear it now. Now? Excellent. Lydia is de Michigan en los Estados Unidos. Lydia tiene ocho años. Los padres de su mamá son de Colombia. So this is the story told with sound effects. And you could like just be playing this as the students come in. You could have them work on it while they're coloring. There are many, many different options. Um, Meredith asks, are there plan to create an elementary French program in Voces? That is on our dream list of someday. It's not in the works currently, but it's, it's something we hope to get to when we are done with a couple of other things we are working on. So hopefully someday is the answer. And I would guess yes, but I just don't want to guarantee it um, unless it's already in the works. 
uh, after the Vamos videos, you have multiple choice. For your older elementary students, you can have them do this on their own. I would recommend, I always let my students kind of self-select once your class is kind of trained in the ways to interact appropriately. And by that, I mean, if the kid is confident they can do it on their own, I will let them go and do it on their own. If they feel like they need a little bit of help, I'll let them work on it with a partner. If they feel like they need a medium amount of help, I'll let them work on it in a small group of three or four. And if they feel like, ah, oh, I'm totally lost, I have them come and sit with me. I have done this up to eighth grade. And for the most part, students are really good at selecting the appropriate place for them. When I start doing these questions with the littles, what I like to do if you have a smart board or a way to project is I just project it up onto the screen and I read it to them and I say, who thinks they know the answer? And I have them come up and they get to touch the answer on the board. And I am very carefully waiting on my computer. So the second they touch the answer, I click it with my screen. So they think that they're like interacting and doing all the things, but really I'm just modeling for them. And it's really great um, way for them to get extra repetitions and they love it. Kindergartners even will sit super quietly for a chance to come up and touch the right thing on the screen. So that's a fun way to kind of get them to use these resources, even if they're not quite ready to read them on their own. And this is just a kind of like a matching or multiple choice. This is a matching one. And then this is one where they get to draw and then take a picture. And um, you get to see the picture of their work. And I know that's really, really helpful, especially with the littles. With your older students, there are questions that come with some of the pictures, or you could tell them to write a sentence about their picture, just all customizable to the age of your students. We also have currently Jesse Felice videos. These videos connect with each of the themes for the chapter. She does a cute little video that's kind of like an Instagram-y, like Facebook-y type video. I'm not, I don't do Instagram, so I, I could be wrong about the exact social media that she's trying to mimic, but they're, they're really cute. And um, we are really close to releasing all of our interviews for Primaria Dose. And I just finished putting those together and I'm excited about those. We also have beautiful articles. They're leveled A, B, and C, and version A has the least amount of text, version B has a little bit more, and version C has the most. And the idea is that we're not overwhelming the students, we're helping them feel, you know, um, capable and helping them to scaffold up to the higher levels of reading. You can certainly give your um, students that are needing extra practice, version A, you could get heritage speakers, version C. So there's no wrong way to do this. You could use it to scaffold the whole class, or you could use it to differentiate amongst your students. And these ones are about these amazing creatures. And then you get to see the pictures at the end, and it's really fun for kids to get to explore the world this way. They love animals, which you probably know. Finally, we have the world in photos where they get to explore the world through photos and you can read about the photos. You can also talk about the photos and do something like compare this to how they celebrate birthdays where in their homes. And we do in the resource center, which I'll show you if we have time, have a great KWL chart, one of those Venn diagrams with the circles. So for your older elementary students, you can have them filling this in with as a class, I would do it as a class first. And then on the next one, maybe have them try on their own or with a partner or a small group. And this is another one of those beautiful pictures that we have for students to learn about the world. And then finally, we also have amazing panoramas. These are fun just to talk about with your students. Again, you can compare and contrast to what their city might like, but you can also use these for I spy. Students love playing I spy, especially at the elementary levels. So I just say to my, I just have the kids say veo veo, and the kid says que ves, the class says que ves, and then the kid will say veo algo, and then they might say azul. And I might have the kids guess, I see something blue, and if we've had enough guesses and we're not getting it, I might say, okay, is it big or small? And then give some other additional language to help them describe their item, which just increases, kind of scaffolds them up. You could also divide your picture into multiple quadrants and say, is it to the right or the left? Is it above or below? Just depending upon what language you're wanting your kids to pick up. Finally, we have the Historia Larga, which is a larger story. It includes a vocabulary test, um, as well as all of the elements you saw in our other stories. And then you have the can-do statements, where students can self-evaluate how much they understand. Those are very helpful for evaluations. 
Now, these are the characters, the main characters from Primaria Dose. In the final episode, in the final story, they all get to meet at this music festival, which is super exciting. Um, and these are a few of my favorite things. And I only have five minutes um, to go over these, so I'm going to go quick. The interviews. The interviews all have pop-up video, which is amazing. In this one, they're talking about their favorite class. And if the students don't understand this, you can replay the last segment and it will replay exactly the um, answer to the question. And it's great because after they've seen this and you've talked about it, it might be easier for them to hear it. So it's a great way to get some extra free repetitions. Um, yeah, I love, maybe had someone say that their students love those interviews. I do too. And I'm so excited to um, release the, the next level of interviews. And my students love them as well. It's so fun to connect with other kids. Um, we have the Jesse Feliz videos and Primaria Una. We have the Pablo El Profe, which are these kind of funny videos for the kids that are thematic. We also have Poco Yo, which is super fun. I would recommend talking through these with the students first and then letting them watch them. My students always love the Poco Yo's and there's lots of fun activities you can do with those. I have a blog on the Vose's website about my favorite one that I recommend you check out if you have elementary. It's gold. I would tell you about it, but we don't have time. We also in Primaria Una have this great um, Nico El Nieke reader that we just put in. Um, it's about Nico and it, it, there's also some science cross-curricular ties. I highly recommend it. We're working on a novel for Primaria Dos, but we're not there yet. And then in Primaria Dos, we have Cuéntame, which is this amazing podcast by Marta Ruiz Yedinak, where she goes over a million different topics and she does it first in very slow and comprehensible Spanish. And then second, she goes like up to full pace. So you could have students of all ages enjoy those. And we have some activities you can do, have students do like kind of generic ones with any of her podcasts as well. Marta is a native speaker. In the additional resources, we have comic strips. What I like to do for my youngest students is I write the words out on one comic strip for the story, and then I copy that for all my students and have them draw that in. For slightly older students, I'll leave a few words out and give them a word blank so they can plug it in and then draw it. And then for the oldest students, they can write the story and draw the story. We also have that KWL chart there um, and some other things. Finally, we have in our appendix coloring pages, as well as all of these things, because sometimes elementary kids or all kids just need to color, and sometimes you just need to sit there. So you might put on that Vamos video and say, okay, we're going to watch this, and you color the picture from it, or you find all the chameleons in the pictures. So each story has at least a few coloring pages included in the appendix so that you can just have days where your students color. Finally, we have our game center, which has all sorts of amazing games. Last but not, le um, not the least of which is Blook It. And Blook It is amazing because you can um, create a game, leave it up as homework with a free account, and then have that there for your students to play over and over and over and over, which is tons of free repetitions for your students. And Pedro's Adventures in Spanish, which is in Primaria Dos, is amazing. It's one of those like 80s games where you have to like look inside of things and solve little puzzles and see how things go together. All in Spanish, made for kids learning Spanish, great for your faster processors or kids who need an extra challenge or even your native speakers. Um, just a real quick plug, we have our CI Summit. It's amazing. It's like summer camp for teachers tied with a vacation. This is coming up next July. We have an entire elementary cohort that my, myself and my friend Allison Litton tend, have led for many years. We go through all sorts of amazing elementary things, not um, Vose specific, uh, so that, but just elementary specific. So it's a really powerful week. Um, I went to my first conference after 10 years of teaching and thought I would never go again and have gone every time since because I love it so much. I'm not trying to force you, but if you've never been, it's pretty amazing to just be with other language teachers and to walk through the halls and hear the excitement and hear people exchanging ideas in different languages. Because a lot of times as language teachers, we work in isolation and the chance to be with others of our kind is pretty amazing. Um, I got a great suggestion in the chat about adding a little bit of dotted text to the coloring pages so they can trace it. That's fabulous, especially for the youngest. Um, and you can have students add their own text as well. Finally, at most days, we have free virtual trainings. We have lots and things of things in our training library. Um, we also have monthly webinars. I'm hosting one later this month with Myra Canyon about using Capybara and Combotas in, in class and some of her other novels. Um, we also have paid virtual and in-person trainings where we can come to you or we can do a longer training with your department over the web. And last but not least, because I took it up to the very last minute, we are here to help you. I know how hard teachers work. I know that a lot of the times you're on your own. Please reach out. 
I've taught elementary for 18 years. I have all sorts of ideas. I'm here for you if you need us. We're all here for you. And I always end my sessions with my very favorite language quote. Education is the kindling of a flame, not the filling of a vessel. You're doing amazing things, kindling lots of flames, making the world a better place. Mm -hmm. If we can help kindle yours or if we can help support you, please let us know. And that is the end of my very short 30 minutes. If you have questions in the chat, throw them in there and I will stick around for just a minute. But if you are satisfied, please feel free to rejoin the main room so you don't miss the next session. I'll only stay for a minute or two. Thank you for your time. I really appreciate it, especially in the summer when you have so many things you could be doing. You're all wonderful. You're all my heroes. I love teachers. <laughs>